Bioscope Tehchu was created to support Bhutanese filmmakers and community, share Bhutanese cinema with the world, create an online archive, history and community for Bhutanese cinema, and to inspire and celebrate artistic voices and stories of Bhutan. Thirteen years since, its fir since it first started in 2011, this year Bioscope Tehchu brings you a variety of films from amateur and professional filmmakers. From the 26 submissions this year, 18 were shortlisted. And Beskop Tichu, in collaboration with BBS, brings to you some of these filmmakers to find out more about their films. Today we have Sonam Yang Yangzom with us. Hi and welcome. La. Thank you so much for taking this time out to be here with me today. To, and um, I must tell you, I enjoyed thoroughly I thoroughly enjoyed your film. It's a documentary, Mola. Yes, yes. And uh, the title of your documentary is Butterfly Bhutan. Yes. I watched your documentary and then I was wondering, Butterfly Bhutan. I was trying to relate the title of the documentary with the documentary. What is the story behind it? Uh, you know about the butterfly effect. I was thinking about yeah. that, but I didn't want to make assumptions. Yes, the yeah. butterfly effect. Because yes. uh, it's, uh, it is said that uh, when a butterfly's wings flap in one side, uh, other side of the world, there will be a hurricane. So just mm -hmm. like that, how my character, Sonam Funso, I call him Uncle Sonam. Mm. Uh, just like that, how his small action is, uh, it has this Ref uh, reflection? No. Repercussion. Repercussions yeah, yeah. Uh, towards uh, the future wow. generation. So that's how we came up with the title Butterfly Bhutan. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. so that's the story behind the title. Yes. How one man's small gesture will have a bigger impact somewhere. Yes. Yes, yes. So that's the story behind the title now. I want to know more about how you decided to uh, make this story. How did you come about uh, the story? Okay. Uh, initially, uh, my father, who's also a filmmaker, was working with Uncle Sonam mm -hmm. uh, about his journey, about uh, how he uh, started tree plantation and mm -hmm. then throughout his, till last year, I think he has pl planted almost more than like a lakh trees. Wow, yeah. uh, and uh, my dad was capturing uh, his journey and when he was doing that, we had a discussion with my dad and then I was asking him about Uncle Sonam and then uh, that was the time when I said, like, can I take over? Mm. Because uh, it was not really <laughs> going anyway. It yeah. was just like, it was just going with uh, his friend, uh, taking some pictures. And then it was just like a passion. And then two friends staying together. Mm. But then we decided to uh, go, like, full, make full documentary out of it. Give it a story. Give yes. it a voice. Yes. Th because otherwise, it'll just be a compilation, uh, compilation of videos of someone who's very passionate about yes, planting, planting in the forest mm. Mm. but I think what you did was gave it a voice gave it um, there was definitely an angle but it gave the story so much meaning how one man now for those of you who didn't watch the documentary yet this uh, documentary is about a man who has dedicated his life yes. into planting new trees, mm. meh, new mm. saplings, uh, meanwhile taking uh, care of what we already have in Memo. Oh, yeah. And someone who doesn't look at plants like uh, like something that, l the way we look at trees and the way uh, Uncle Sona mm. looks at trees, I think, and plants are different. He looks at it as if it is a part of him. Oh, it, it like yes, the, oh. the yeah. way he takes care of uh, the tree, he, he one time told me that it's like taking care of his mother. Mm. 
Mm. Uh, he has an old mother at his home and then he feeds her and then takes care of her. And just like that, if you take care of your, if, if you take care of the trees, the way he's taking care of mm. your, somebody that you really love and cherish, then like, you never know. Uh, because this tree, this one tree, it may be one tree right now, but then like it can have uh, multiple effects in the future. Exactly. So it's just like that uh, he was uh, taking care of the trees. And mm. uh, should I talk about the conflict and all that or? There was a conflict? I mean, I mean conflict <laughs> in the sense like uh, when he was taking care of, it was just like, it was not this documentary. It's not just about uh, Uncle Sonam taking care of the trees. Mm. It's about him going his, uh, all the way like uh, not listening to the criticisms that he's facing because mm. he's removing the prayer flags. Oh yes, yes. So yeah. th I think that is yeah. the what do you call like the main um, conflict there. Conflict I mean, like of you the said, yeah, uh, the uh, Uncle Sonam uh, to save the trees and the plants yes. wants people to do a better job of tying the lunda. Yes, lunda. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. But yes. Um, because it is hampering the trees he starts taking them down yes. and then the the religious side in, yes. uh, interjects yes, yes, and yes, they yes. are not very pleased with it so this whole documentary i wanted to ask you how difficult was it to get the the input from the uh, the religious side i mean uh, when when we first started it was just uh, a simple documentary mm -hmm. but then like uh, uh, when i went uh, and followed him like this documentary we, it, it's almost like six years journey wow. from the day we I started that we should do it and then uh, from the journey uh, we when we go around in the forest and taking down the prayer flags there were some people like they just look at us you know like what are these people doing oh. we it's they uh, some they come um, in and hang the prayer flags but then we are removing it mm -hmm. and uh, mostly Uncle Sonam was removing yeah. it. So there were like people who were looking at us with disgust sometimes yeah, yeah. and then uh, we tried to approach them. Basically uh, my character he went and then he talked with some of the uh, people who had come to host the prayer flags mm. and he was telling them that uh, the way the prayer flag use I mean, it's hosted previously mm. when in the olden times. It is like up in the mountains where you can see the where the four elements are present and yeah, all that. Yeah. But now, like y above the road in your mm. car, you can see prayer flags. Mm. So, and uh, after hosting the pra uh, after after talking to them, there were like a lot of criticisms. And then we went to uh, the the, uh, the Tango Monastery at the university and then we were talking with uh, the principal there mm. and then they were he was saying that they also do not um, in accept the way the prayer flags are hosted mm. now. So then like we got an encouragement that oh we can you know yeah. fully go ahead and tell the story to the wow. people because we are not basically going against the religion. True. We're just going against the way it is hosted. Exactly. So we thought like it's really important story to tell. Wow. It, I, I got to watch the document, the part of the documentary where these monks are debating amongst themselves yes. about how to do it. And uh, initially it was like, oh, maybe we shouldn't do Lunda. Mm. And then uh, the by the end of the discussion, they decide it's not whether you should or not do it. It is encouraged to do it. But how you hang your Lunda, Lundas yes. are... Is, is, is the main discussion here. So yes, oh, yes, wow. no, yes. No. So um, we have learned about the story now. I would like, could you take us behind the cameras and mm. how you, after the conception of the idea, what was the process that followed? Uh, it's, it's a very long journey. Mm. And uh, uh, bef uh, before 2023, before 2022, uh, whatever f we filmed, uh, whenever we went and filmed Uncle Sonam, his journey. I mean, we had to go season-wise because of the tree plantation and all that, and we didn't have. I mean, cameras and all that. We were using our phone, and uh, we were. I was borrowing camera from my friends, and then we were just going ahead and then following Uncle Sonam. Like mm. sometimes there was no cameraman. I was all alone <laughs> filming wow. with uh, Uncle Sonam, and sometimes my dad he went ahead and filmed uh, Uncle Sonam because it was 
not possible I mean to for me to be there most of the time especially before uh, in, in, in the initial st stages of the documentary and uh, then last year uh, we got a little funding from uh, Tokyo Docs mm -hmm. and uh, we were able to hire a good camera mm -hmm. cameraman and the whole team we were able to uh, set up a whole team and then like fully follow Uncle Sonam for like almost six, seven months, I think. Wow. So, so wait, the visuals in the documentary, is that just from that camera or were there inputs from the previous shootings? Yeah, it, it's, there's inputs from uh, previous shoots. There's like camera, uh, mobile phone footages, then like uh, normal, like, uh, still camera footages and then Canon and all the cameras are mixed and then but the majority uh, part of the documentary we used uh, the footages that we were shot uh, by this <laughs> professional camera. I, I noticed how visually it's stunning mm -hmm. the uh, scenes looked beautiful in your documentary. I was going to ask you did you have uh, like a method or was there um, a technique that you used to get that to i mean when when i went to when i go to the field i just don't think about uh, what kind of uh, i mean whether i should go with white or closer mm. i just followed the character mm. so maybe that's my method just following the character and then doing what i mean filming everything his his uh, his doing and mm. sometimes uncle used to say can i just eat without the camera i know <laughs> so you have visuals <laughs> of him yeah. eating too yeah so but it's powerful uh, so i think we just follow the character and then uh, try to see what comes out of it so that's what we planted wow yeah. no i love the visuals of him eating because you could see how he was all alone in the yes, forest yes and he's eating yes and he has a goal mm -hmm. and he's one man, one alone, alone. Yes, alone, and alone ranger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he is on this pursuit to preserve the forest yes. and grow it. So I, I, I loved it. I mm, loved it. Uh, so initially it was your dad's uh, uh, idea. idea mm. And then you took over. Yes. What made you take over this? Uh, I was, it, it was, uh, I, if I remember correctly, June 2nd, tree plantation day. Mm -hmm. So I had taken my boys uh, and uh, we went to Uncle Sonam and had asked him, you know, can you help us plant uh, maybe like three, four trees, uh, saplings. And then when I was doing that, he was telling me like, you plant now, but you will not take care. That's what people do. So I said, no, I'll come back. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll come back and take care of the tree or plant. And then he was saying, but young trees eventually die. So I was like, why? Because I, I'll come back and take care mm -hmm. of the tree, of the sapling. And then he was saying, come here. Then he was sh showing me the uh, lungda, mm -hmm. how it's tied. I mean, then it's, it was basically oh. strangling the uh, young tree. So then I was like, oh, this is really important. We should tell the people. And then I went home and then we had a discussion with my dad. And I was like, yeah, yeah take over. You have a... <laughs> wow. He <laughs> yeah, he's just doing Uncle Sonam told so. his story to the right person. Yeah, now yeah, you yeah. really <laughs> amplified it and made sure people <laughs> knew about it. And I hope there is more awareness on this because I think um, for a lot of us, we only think about the religious aspect of it yes, and what yes. has been passed down to us from mm. our parents. Mm -hmm. And that was how why it is important to, to do the lunda. Mm. But I think this is... A very important message that you have in your documentary, and I'm I'm, I'm hoping through the festival, you pe a lot of the people will get to uh, get the message. Mm -hmm. um, what were some challenges that you faced during shooting? I mean, budget was definitely mm -hmm. one of the challenges because we could not hire a camera or a cameraman. Mm -hmm. It was just me, my dad, and sometimes my brother helped. And uh, the other thing was, uh, because we have shot in many different cameras, mm -hmm. it was difficult to uh, for the editor to like have a same look, I mean, have a same color because the resolution, I mean, it was all over the I places. Bet. So that was like one of the uh, secondary challenges mm -hmm. that I faced. I see. Mm -hmm. And so how did you c get over it? Oh, uh, during the post-production, I mean, uh, uh, one of my friends recommended a color correction in India, mm. and they they did a good job. They oh did wow! A good okay. Job. Yeah, so. Let's talk about your team then. Um, who are who were in your team? 
initially it was just like I said it was just me my dad and sometimes my brother mm -hmm. but then after I got a little funding from Tokyo Dogs I was able to hire a really good cameraman Sunam Adhikari mm -hmm. and I had a very hard-working uh, assistant director Idin Pratan and uh, my editor is also like really good uh, Kabita Rai mm -hmm. and uh, there are I mean Production manager was my own brother. I see. Uh, he was helping around, uh, bringing lunch for the team and all that. Wow. And assistant camera again, my brother. <laughs> oh wow! So he was doing multiple roles, just like yourself. No, but uh, two brothers. Oh, okay, yeah, different, so brothers. different okay, brothers. Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so all right. that that's uh, like my whole team. But this documentary wouldn't have been possible if I didn't get a support from Tokyo Dogs and my producer in Japan, mm -hmm. Matsubara San. Mm -hmm. Uh, I pitched the story to him and he was like, yeah, you know, let's pitch it to Tokyo Dogs. Wow. So uh, we, tr uh, we pitched Tokyo Dogs, Colors of Asia, mm -hmm. and we were able to get the funding to like really go fully make the documentary. So, Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Uh, what inspired you to be a filmmaker? Because you were a journalist too. You yes. had another avenue where you could have uh, pursued that. But I think you went after being a filmmaker. Yes. Uh, firstly, of course, it's my dad. Mm -hmm. And secondly, like uh, uh, being a print journalist, you just write uh, the story. And uh, the people who can actually listen to the story or who, who will know about the story are the educated lots. Mm -hmm. And making a documentary and reaching it to the remote areas, I mean, people who are not even who are illiterate, let's say, can come and watch my documentary because True. it's in Zonka, yeah. so anyone can understand. Mm -hmm. So that was, uh, then I thought like, let's do it. <laughs> so what does future yeah. look like you for that now? Do you see more documentaries or maybe you step into film? I mean, I, I prefer, I call myself documentary filmmaker, so mm -hmm. that I, I prefer to stay in this line, yeah. uh, but I don't mind, uh, uh, I mean, directing few feature films. I, I mean, see. I directed one feature film, but uh, which was when we chat for Samu. Uh, when when we chat. When we chat. Okay, yeah, all it right. Was for Samu. Oh, I see. Uh, but it's not. It, it was my first first project, and not like really up to my uh, what I had oh thought okay, about I it. See. But maybe in future I might uh, <laughs> direct a feature film. Mm. For your documentary so films, what kind of themes would you like to stick with? Though, will it still be? Will would Will it always uh, be related to a topic that the topic that you covered in this current film, or mm -hmm. will you have a different? Uh, I mean, in the in in previous uh, documentaries, I've covered health, okay. and then there's environment, and uh, uh, in future, uh, it, it's most mostly maybe like environment. Mm -hmm. uh, it's quite interesting, and culture that I. Uh, want to tell people that culture is our identity mm -hmm. and uh, to I mean visual is the most I mean, effective way to tell mm -hmm. I think so maybe these two topics that uh, I will want to stick to but I won't mind uh, touching other themes I because see. health is also really important. Wow yeah. okay so all right so Nam, so uh, if there are younger mm -hmm. aspir aspiring filmmakers specifically documentary mm -hmm. filmmakers, what advice would you have for them? For young filmmakers or like anyone uh, who uh, wants to uh, tell a story, I would say like you don't wait for, uh, thinking that you don't have a good camera mm -hmm. because nowadays smartphone, it's like you have a camera in your hand, just go and then you know film, you don't think about the storyline or you don't think about, just go and film what mm -hmm. you think it should be uh, told and after filming then like uh, filming for two three days or maybe months mm -hmm. then the realization comes that oh this is the storyline that I want to mm -hmm. follow so then you can like pitch I think most of uh, Bhutanese we uh, young filmmakers will not have uh, they, w they will obviously think like budget is the problem but uh, there are platforms where mm -hmm. if you have a good story You'll, you'll support wow. because I didn't know in the beginning mm -hmm. even I was just doing commissioned documentaries mm -hmm. and then uh, the documentaries that I really wanted to make I was it was being left out because I didn't have budget 
But then I came to know about the platforms where documentary filmmakers can actually pitch their story. And if you really feel strong about the story, it, I think it comes out. Mm -hmm. So you can make a, I mean, get a budget mm -hmm. to film the documentary. So, so I think that is one of the best advice you, you would have given to any young filmmaker, aspiring you. filmmakers there. So thank you so much thank for you. taking this time out. Once again, congratulations for thank having you. made into the festival. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So much. Thank you.